You are going to show up to your very first film set and completely freak out. Film sets are hectic, busy, and everybody expects you to be very efficient with your time and with the company money. So how do you survive something like that? And how do you know what you don't know? This guide will point you in the right direction, get you ready for your first film set before you've ever stepped foot on one, and show you what to do after your very first day because you're gonna be tired. First things first, you're gonna look for something called a call sheet. They look like this. On that call sheet is everything that you need to know for your very first day on set. This includes everything. What time are you eating lunch? Where to park? Where's the location? What time should you show up? And who else is gonna be on that film set? I highly suggest that whatever the call time says, you show up 30 minutes early because 30 minutes is early, 15 is on time, and being there at the call time, that's late. Do not go to sleep until you have this call sheet in hand and saved in your phone because these are your instructions for the very next day, including what time to wake up and report to. So make sure that you save this in your phone because you don't want to accidentally go to sleep and wake up at 4 a.m. only to realize that call time was 3.30 uh, a.m. So let's say everything goes well. You have the call sheet. You know what time to show up. It tells you where to park and Congratulations, you're gonna be parking the farthest away because you're the PA. You're going to have to hoof it by parking the furthest away and leaving the closer spots to the crew. Now, I hope you wore your closed toed comfortable shoes because you're gonna be doing a lot of walking today and a lot of standing. So I would suggest getting some Dr. Scholl's inserts if you can, get the custom ones, they are well worth it. If you are filming outside, make sure to bring sunscreen and bug spray. Trust me, I have the scars from mosquito bites and I've been sunburnt more than once. Even if you think that you're pretty resistant to the sun, still spritz on at least some SPF 30 for protection because you're gonna be outside for 14 hours straight and not many people can endure that much sunlight. In terms of what you should be wearing for clothing, in general, wear dark muted colors. Solid prints are best. Do not wear bright white or bright, bright colors. This isn't a fashion show and you're not supposed to be standing out. What you wanna do is wear colors that are absorbing light so that when you're on a film set, you're not reflecting hot pink all over the place. There's gonna be a lot of lights and it's important for you to recede in the background so that you're not a distraction for the talent on screen who has to look past the camera and see neon pink in the corner of their eyes in the distance. So make sure to wear those muted colors, preferably long pants, and uh, at least like a short sleeve. Don't wear something like a tube top or short shorts because you're gonna be very uncomfortable. Even if you're shooting outdoors somewhere warm like in a tropical area, at minimum wear some clothing that hits your knees and goes down below your shoulders because you just want that kind of protection from the sun, bugs, mosquitoes, things like that. And you wanna be able to move comfortably and bend down and squat without uh, flashing some people. All right, you've parked, you showed up. The first thing that you should do is not look for the friend who got you on this film set and do not go talk to the director. They are both very busy. You should go to the person that you've been told to report to. Usually that's gonna be the head PA. This person's going to be your boss and they're going to give you instructions for the rest of the day. Make sure that you are a good listener and that you are paying attention. Number one thing you need to do is shut off your cell phone or put it on silent, get rid of vibrate, anything that could be a noise or a distraction. Another rule is even though you're seeing other people on their cell phones, don't do that yourself. You are the PA and you have to really show that you're willing to work hard and not goof around on your phone. Plus some film sets have security where they don't even want to suspect that you are filming. I film for the military quite a bit and they absolutely will not allow cell phones around unless you have permission. Once you go over to the head PA or whoever your boss is, make sure to introduce yourself. A lot of people don't do that and after a while they're wandering around and you realize that you have no idea who this person is who's working for you. Introduce yourself and make sure that they know that you are there as a first time PA. Don't be afraid to say that. It's more important for them to know where you're starting than for you to try and pretend like you know everything. Because if they say something to you like, bring me a stinger in an apple box and you have no idea what they're talking about, that's just gonna waste time and it's gonna be really frustrating for them. Communication is the number one thing that you need on a film set, so communicate from the beginning. Hey, I'm a beginner, I'm a noob, I don't really know what I'm doing, I could use some help. They'll be patient with you and they're gonna work with you. If you have no idea what I just said in terms of 
Apple Box and Stinger. I did make a list of top 50 lingo that you should know before you step on a film set. You can check out the link in the description box below. So as you go about your day, every single time you do a task for someone or approach somebody new, very quickly introduce yourself. I'm talking really fast. Hi, I'm Sydney, I'm the PA. I've been told to bring you the Stinger. What you wanna do is make sure that they know your name so that they're not just screaming out, I need a PA or you, or hey, come over here. The more that they use your name, the more they're going to learn to trust you and depend on you. And if you're very responsive, this is a great sign. It means you're starting to build that crew experience and those relationships that are gonna be lasting for a long time. Crews tend to travel together. So when you can start establishing yourself with one crew, they'll pull you on to the next one. All right, now you're working. There's a few things that you need to know in terms of navigating the set. This is my map of a faux film set, just so that you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So over here, we have the director's circle and uh, you, you do not approach this, okay? I don't care if you are like super, super curious, don't enter the director's circle. And especially do not move in front of the camera. That's this area over here absolutely never step in front of the camera unless you have been directed to do so. For example, placing items on the set, um, having to put something behind an actor or actress, um, moving lights, things like that. And if you do have to move in front of the camera, always make sure that you say crossing so that the camera team knows that you're about to cross in front of the lens and ruin their shot. They might be trying to practice or do rehearsals. So if you are just moving back and forth, it can be really frustrating for them. So always make sure that you're aware when you're in front of the camera. Now, the other thing is do not touch and move things without permission. One, they're trying to do continuity on set, which means they're trying to make sure that things are in the same place as they were in the previous take. So if you bump or move something, you ruin that continuity. So just don't touch anything. Uh, the second part is that when you touch other people's stuff that's not in your department, people can get really mad. You are not authorized and qualified to touch that stuff. So only do what you've been told to. It's for your safety, it's for everybody else's safety, and it's also to prevent gear from getting broken or moved or shifted around. Another note is this also applies for tools. Do not just take another person's tools and walk away with them. Always ask for permission. The answer is probably gonna be no, so make sure to go to your head PA and get the tools there or just bring your own. I always recommend having at least a multi-tool in your pocket. Continuing on the map, this is Video Village. This is where you're gonna see a bunch of TV screens. This is where they can feed footage to directors, continuity, anybody else who needs to see the final image, which is not you. It'll be really cool if you can pass by and kind of glance at the distance and be like, oh, what's what are they filming right now? But do not approach it. Do not hover and look in front of the screen. Whenever you hear somebody say like, oh, that was a really great take, absolutely do not. You have to fight the urge to wanna to go over and look at that screen and be like, what was so cool? I promise you will see it eventually. Where you can go, and which is very important, is craft services. This is the crafty area. This is where there's snacks, hydration, water, things that you might need in order to sustain yourself throughout the day. Sometimes there's a sunscreen, bug repellent, there's Tylenol, very important for a film set, and a first aid kit just in case you hurt yourself, because you will eventually. This is where the talent hangs out. Again, do not go into this area unless you have been absolutely directed to do so. This is where talent is relaxing, getting ready for their lines, where the director comes and talks to them. Do not go over there. You are not here to get autographs and selfies. If they approach you, that's fine. But in the meantime, just stay away from there. A few bits of random advice to throw in. Don't chew gum because a lot of times people just spit it out on set and it's disgusting, especially when you step on it. Don't bring any snacks that you have to throw something away that can't just go in your pocket. Like for example, don't eat a banana and then just leave it around. Eat the banana at craft services because there's trash cans over there. You always want to smell nice. Make sure to shower. <sighs> I can't believe I have to give this advice. Make sure to shower every day put on deodorants and don't wear heavy perfume and cologne. This is just as bad as smelling bad. A lot of times I can tell people don't shower and then they wear cologne and then it's really overwhelming. Those smells are so distracting and when you're around someone all day, it just kind of clings to you. It's pretty gross. Also, if you're a smoker, maybe plan on quitting. What I found recently is that a lot of crews don't want to hire smokers because one, you're taking smoke breaks and they're paying for that time. So basically they're saying like, you're wasting 15 minutes here every couple of hours, and that's a lot of time to be missing. We're not paying you for that. 
Now, I think people are in general more okay with vaping, still not great. Some people are sensitive to that and there's allergies and other things. So your best bet is just gonna be getting those nicotine packets that you can just kind of put in your mouth. Uh, again, don't chew the gum because that's gonna be everywhere. But if you can get like the little pouches, that's probably a lot better. Okay, everybody is ready to start filming. And what you're gonna hear is quiet on set. And no matter what you are doing, freeze. I mean, like don't freeze on one foot, but freeze. Stop moving and stop talking. It needs to be absolutely quiet. There's a few reasons why. One is audio sound quality. Those microphones are very sensitive and yes, they can hear you walking in the background. Second, you don't want to distract the talent. If you're moving around in the background and the talent is trying to focus and they see you moving constantly, it's really going to distract them. The only people who should be moving are camera crews that have to actually like move a dolly or steady cam, background extras, pyrotechnics, anything like that. But you, you don't move. You stay quiet and you stay still. Once you hear quiet on set, next you're gonna hear the first AD call out the order to get the camera rolling. They're gonna confirm with speed. And then you hear audio rolling. They'll confirm with speed. That means that the camera and the audio recorders are truly recording. It's a confirmation. So now you really need to make sure that you are absolutely silent because they're about to do the take. They'll slate it in and then you'll hear the director call action or go or whatever is the, the action term that they're gonna use. They're gonna do the take, you'll hear a cut, then wait a couple seconds and then you know that truly they have finished, uh, camera's been shut off, sound is shut off and you can move again. Now in this whole process, if you don't know what you're doing, ask somebody, ask your head PA first, always go up the chain of command. But if you're next to somebody and it's related to their job or something that you're doing for them, always ask. They would rather take a couple of seconds to explain to you the correct answer than have you wander all over the film set for five minutes trying to figure it out because you are wasting time and they're gonna get really bothered that you were trying to pretend like you knew something when you actually didn't. Nobody's gonna expect you to be 100% perfect on your very first day. If you've already set the expectation, hey, I'm new, I need a little bit of help, but everyone tends to kind of understand that it's a learning process and there's so many new filmmakers these days, it's a little less exclusive than it was back then, so people are more willing to teach. All right, it's time for lunch break. Thank goodness you finally have a moment to sit down, rest, relax, and not think about your work. What you're gonna wanna do as the PA is make sure to go at the end of the line. They have something called last man, which means that the last person through line starts the clock for the lunch period. So if you can give the people ahead of you who probably have more important, sorry, but more important jobs than you, and they have to get back to work right away, buy them a little bit extra time, go to the back of the line. You, I'm sorry, but you're starting at the very bottom of the totem pole. Just like you have to park the farthest, you have to be the farthest back in the line. This is a good chance to network with other people. Lunchtime is a little more relaxed. People tend to not be so intense about wanting to talk about work or anything. So you'll probably get questions like, um, are you enjoying it? How did you get this job? Oh, I know Joe, Joe got me on set. Oh, that's really cool. I've worked with Joe for two years, right? Use this as an opportunity to network um, talk to other people, you can pick their brains, but the best thing that you can do is ask them questions. People love to talk about themselves. So if you can say, well, what got you in the industry? Or, you know, why did you work here? Or what do you think of this? Or, you know, what's your favorite movie? Those kind of conversations make them feel closer to you. What they found is a lot of times if you let people talk about themselves, they are more likely to like you than somebody who was just talking about themselves. So really good tip to know, um, get them talking and start networking. Don't be shy. You are here on a film set. Make every bit of use of lunch break as possible. When you're done, put your stuff away, throw away your trash and uh, make sure to pop a mint. Again, don't chew gum, but get a little bit of mint because you wanna make sure you smell fresh and nice. Now, as you go through the rest of the day, know that a lot of times film sets go up to 14 or 16 hours. This is an unfortunate part of the film industry that they're currently trying to change. There's been a lot of movement recently on trying to shorten the hours because it can get dangerous when you're that tired at the very end of the day and you have to drive home. There's been friends of mine who have had car accidents. So a word of caution towards the end of the day, make sure that you are 100% okay to drive. Don't drive home. If you are way too tired, just, 
you know, call a taxi or something like that because those days are gonna be really hard, especially your very first day. It's gonna be so hard on you. Now on your way home, you're gonna wanna take a look at the call sheet once again and make sure that you're ready for the next day. Another part of it too is after meeting everybody throughout the day, you can now look at the call sheet and see like, this is Joe, he was the gaffer. This is Michelle, she was the grip. So if your boss says, bring a stinger to Joe, you know what that means, who Joe is, and why he needs one. Another thing I have to say is absolutely put your safety first. I cannot emphasize this enough. Don't run, don't jump, don't do anything reckless on set, don't touch equipment that you don't know how to handle, and don't try and show off by being like, oh, I can do it when you're not qualified. On the flip side of that, if you get asked to do something that you are not comfortable doing, speak up and say that you are not comfortable with it. Now, the one thing that is unavoidable that is going to hurt no matter what is your back and your feet because you'll have been standing all day long on your feet, moving around, doing squats, lifting heavy equipment, and guess what? Your back and feet are gonna be killing you, so get yourself some Epsom salts, maybe a little massage thing, or a little bit of uh, magnesium, or you know any any supplement that can help you arnica because it's gonna it's probably gonna hurt the first day and if you're not used to standing for long periods of time uh your core is gonna have to get more developed same with your legs your back muscles everything will get tougher over time but day one it's gonna be a long grueling day this is where a lot of people quit they're just like hey i want to be the director i don't want to put in hours to be a pa i deserve better than this this is too long i was hungry i was cold i was tired i'm not doing it again and you know what it's good that they quit because that's less competition for you. Nobody is forcing you to become a filmmaker. Just remember, why are you becoming a filmmaker? Go back to that dream, be like, what is it that I want to achieve? There's no other way to do it. You just have to experience everything on a film set. We always hear these stories about the director, Steven Spielberg, who just showed up and became a director. Well, I feel like those days are kind of long gone. These days you do need an education in every single aspect of a film set. So whether you're a PA or just volunteering or coming in as an assistant director, it should be a good experience for everybody to kind of learn the ropes across the entire crew very important because one day if you're the director, you should remember back to what it was like when you were a PA and you now know how you want to run your own film set. Even though it's like my idea and my concept and I'm directing it, I still need an entire crew to help me. So this is not something that you can do solo. Build the community and it starts with being a PA from the bottom up. Just put in those hours, work really hard. I promise you will not always be a PA. You will graduate one day, but just remember this is the learning experience and you should completely embrace it while you've got the chance. Some people would kill to be on a film set. So just remember that, that you get to do something that is super, super cool. So don't just survive your first day, thrive. Work your way up to the top and remember if you can get through the first day, it's the first of many, many to come. If you wanna drill on different types of lingo that you're gonna hear on a film set, the top 50 that I've picked out are here on YouTube. The other remaining 50 for a total of 100 are on Patreon. Make sure to head over there. You get all sorts of extra goodies. I release extra content out there every single month that's not available here on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, go out there and make a film.